Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at chapter one from Road to Latin and do some explanation on the grammar exercises. That way if you're using the textbook, you can get sort of an answer key along with some explanation so you understand what's going on and make sure that you're on the right track. Okay, so if you want to see this again, I'd always direct you to Nova Latin. You can take a look at my website. It has the grammar exercises. It has all the grammar explanations that you might need and some extra stuff too, videos, magistrula, stuff like that. <clears throat> so if you're ever stuck, feel free to go take a look. But for now, let's just focus on grammar exercise one, which comes from the Road to Latin textbook, and I'll walk you through the different problems. So remember in this chapter, we're talking about singular and plural nouns, the difference between A and AE, right? We had a little bit about declensions, the verb endings T versus NT. So all those things are coming into play in these problems. So the instructions tell you to supply the correct case ending and then translate. So you have mensa est blank, cela sunt blank. Okay, so when you break this apart, you want to notice that mensa is singular, right? The table. <clears throat> so if we have a singular noun, mensa, the adjective going with it is also going to be singular. So it's going to have to be magna, right? This is where we see it, and I've highlighted the answers in red. Since mensa ends in an A, magna ends with an A. You're saying the table is big. On the other side, we have celli, which are chairs, right? It's plural because of the AE. So you're saying celli sunt blank. It's going to be par Y with an AE because they're describing celli. So this is one of the first things we're talking about in chapter one. When you have singular nouns, they go with singular adjectives. So basically the endings are going to be the same, right? At least so far. So this sentence, number one, is saying the table is big, the chairs are small. And number two, we have skull blank, sunt mag blank. Okay, now here our noun, scola, some version of scola, meaning school, and our adjective, magna, meaning big, <clears throat> both have blanks. So we're not sure if they're singular or plural. Am I saying the school is big or the schools are big? Well, you can tell because of the only word we have left, the sunt, which means they are. Because sunt is plural, that means our noun has to be plural, right? You're saying the schools are, that would be scoli. And since scoli ends in an AE, the adjective magni needs to end in an AE as well, because they're going to match up. So you're saying the schools are big. In number three, we have Janu blank, sunt apert blank. The same thing is happening. Since we have sunt, they are, it needs to be Janui, right, the doors, and apertai, open. So you put these together. Again, they need to be plural because sunt is plural, and you're saying the doors are open, right? That's why we have the AEs on both. And number four, we have finest blank, est apert blank. Now, again, same thing. Our, our um, noun and our adjective both have blanks, but here the verb is est, which means he, she, or it is. Since my verb is singular, my subject needs to be singular. So here it's not going to be fenestri, it's going to be fenestra, right? Singular, that A ending. And since my noun is singular, my adjective that's describing it is also going to be singular. So you say fenestra est aperta, the window is open. In number five, we have discipal blank, bone blank, stot. OK, so again, we have a noun and an adjective both missing the ending. Look at your verb. Since my verb is singular, stat, it ends in a T, my subject needs to be singular, which means this is going to be discipula. And since discipula ends in an A, it's singular, bona will also end in an A and be singular. So you're saying the good student, the discipula bona, stat, stands, right? The good student stands or is standing. In number six, we have a question, quid est. Then you have the answer, cell blank, par blank, est. Okay, so quid est just means what is it, okay? Now, the second part where the blanks are, the verb is est. So again, since my verb is singular, subject needs to be singular. So it's going to be cella parwa est, right? I'm using the A's. Because um, the verb is singular, my subject will be singular. That's where I got cella with an A. And since my noun, or cella, right, in this case, is singular, the adjective going with it also needs to be singular. So it's parwa. So you're saying or asking, what is it? It's a small chair, right? Cella parwa est. In number seven, we have Julia et Cornelia, sunt puel blank, par blank, okay? So here, we're, we're having um, basically an equal sign. When you have the verb to be, you can say something or someone is something, right? You can almost ignore the Julia and Cornelia for now. The main idea is sunt, they are, okay? Now, since sunt is plural, and also because uh, Julia and Cornelia together are a plural um, subject, we're using plurals here, right? You're saying they are girls, not girl. That wouldn't make sense to say they are girl. So it needs to be puelli, and since puelli is plural, parwi will also be plural, right? You're saying Julia and Cornelia are smart, uh, are small girls. There we go. Then you have number eight. You have qualis discipal blank Julia est. Julia bone blank discipal blank est. 
Okay, so qualis just means what sort of. So you're saying what sort of student is Julia, right? Now I knew that because est is singular and Julia, Julia is also singular, right? So it's all going to match. You're saying what sort of, of student singular is Julia, discipula. Then we also have the answer. Julia is a bona discipula, right? She is a singular girl, so it's going to be a singular student. She is a singular student, right? It wouldn't make sense to say Julia is a good student, right? You're mixing singulars and plurals up. So all the blanks here are going to be A. And again, you're saying what sort of student is Julia? Julia is a good student. Now we have number nine. You have discipula blank, est puel blank, American blank. Okay. Now, again, we don't know if it's singular or plural until we look at the verb, which is est. Since I'm using est, which means he, she, or it is, the subject needs to be singular. So I'm saying discipula, singular, est puella americana, right? The student is a American girl. They're all going to be singular because you're talking about one singular student. And I knew that because my verb is est, which is a singular verb, right? The student is an American girl. Then we have the last one. You have a question. Quiz stat. Magist blank stat. Discipul blank. Non stat. Okay. So quiz stat means who is standing, right? That's not part of really our, our blank here, but for the translation. Now for filling in the blank, you have to look at the verb. Stat is singular, which means this will be magistra singular. The student, or sorry, the teacher is standing. In the second half, though, we have stand, which means they are standing. So it's not going to be the student, discipula, is standing, but the students, discipulae, right? And you have non stand, they are not standing. So if you put it together, you have quistat, who is standing, you have the teacher is standing, magistra stat, and the students do not stand, discipulae non stand. Okay, so this grammar exercise is just pulling together what we did uh, right in chapter one, the grammar, particularly the difference between A and AE, right, for nouns and adjectives, singular or plural, and also the verb endings T and NT for singular and plural verbs. You pull that all together and you should be able to figure this out pretty well. If you have any questions at all, put them in the comments below. I'm happy to help. But otherwise, use these grammar exercises if you're using the textbook just as a way to, you know, practice and make sure you're on the right track. Good luck.